Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is just one of over 80 episodes we release monthly. Now, let's get into this episode. horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tuttle, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. To Red Carson, notorious outlaw gang leader, the law meant little, and the rights and lives of the settlers in the far western territory meant less. Carson and his men didn't ride into a town with guns blazing as other gangs had done, nor did they stop a train in a lonely spot by obstructing the rails. The Carson gang had a different way of accomplishing their purpose. At Rock Hill, for instance, his men had infiltrated into town one by one, and the pleasure-seeking crowd in the cafe had no idea that the trouble was at hand until the tall figure of Red Carson quietly entered and stood near the door. All right, you hombres, quiet down. Hey, who do you think he is? Throw him out. That redhead thinks he's tough. I said quiet down. Look, he drew a gun. Ah, uh, let's run him out of here. This is a holdup. All right, men, line him up and get busy. We're ready, Red. Line up like he said. Hey, look, several hombres pull guns. It's Red Carson and his gang. Good guessing. All right, get their valuables, men. Make it fast. Another time, a train carrying gold in the express car had just puffed out of Dry Rock. A tall red-headed figure entered the passenger car behind the conductor. Tickets, please. Never mind the tickets. Just get out your valuables. This is a hold up. See here, you. You shut up. Some of you men get back in the express car. The others start gathering up what you can get from the folks in here. Come on now, hurry up. Even when Red Carson decided to rustle cattle, the method he and his gang used was unique. Well, Sid, looks like we'll soon have this herd to the stockyards. Yep. 
It's right neighborly of you to come along on the drive with us, Frank. But these cow folks of mine could have handled things just as well without either of us. Some of them are new hands, aren't they? Yeah. I got six cow hands in this drive. Four of the six I hired at one time or another during the past few weeks. Ah, oh, but they're, they're the best ones I have, too. Look, here comes somebody. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, boy. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Howdy, mister. Nice hurt you got there. Yep, sure is. Me and my men will take over from here on. Hey, what is it? Put up that gun, mister, and you sense my cowpokes. The two hombres right in point were the only ones you could really call yours, mister. And they can't help nobody now. The four new hands you took on are helping me now. Take them away, Louis. Here we go, Red. <laughs> News of Red Carson's gang and their methods had spread throughout the territory, but no one knew when or where they'd strike next. When the stories about Red Carson reached the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion Tonto, they set out from Pecos and rode southwest into the territory where the raids and killings had taken place. One afternoon, the two men rode the trail that led to Dry Gulch. The last we heard about Carson's gang, they took over a herd of cattle near the border south of here. Isn't that right? Carson gang have plenty smart leader, seem like. Yes, Tonto, the ruthless one. Red Carson is notorious as a killer, even throughout Arizona and New Mexico territory. No one ever knows when the gang is going to strike until Red appears, then it's too late. Isn't that right? Well, they're a good place to make camp for night, Kimasabi. Uh, over to left. Yes, a clump of cottonwoods. There's water there, too. We can stand the rest, and so can Silver and Scout. Ah. We pitch camp, and then me go get supplies at store and dry gulch. All right, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. After simple preparations had been made at the campsite, Tonto mounted Scout and rode into the nearby town of Dry Gulch to the general store. Oh, Scout, oh, fella. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Anything more, Mrs. Baker? Think you'll be able to get all that stuff out to your buckboard, ma'am? Uh, when I'm not able, I'll ask for help. I reckon someone will have to open that door for me, though. I only got two hands. Well, here, here, me open the door. Uh, hmm. Seems like I saw you someplace before, Indian. Well, me not know. Me get to many places. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> There's a woman who's almost as tough as a man. Ain't any wonder, though. Her husband was a tough outlaw and killer from up Arizona way. Oh, that's so? Yep, he was known as Blackie Baker. Got caught near here a while back and got hanged. Oh, that's not good. Hey, <laughs> nope, it isn't. Not if you're on the end of the rope anyways. <laughs> well, the wife, that's a woman who just went out, bought up a little place about three miles out on the south trail. She's been living there alone ever since. <laughs> Believe me, Mamie Baker's independence all get out. Her seem plenty tough. Yep, she is. Funny thing, too. She never bought much here until this past week. Then for the past several days, she's been coming in and getting enough to feed a bunkhouse full of cowpokes. Well, Baker woman not have help at place? Nary one. <laughs> of course, it isn't for me to fret when she buys so much. It means that much more money in the till. <laughs> What you want to get, Indian? Oh, here. Let me give you a small list. Uh, me come back later. Oh, just a minute, Indian. I can get this little bit together in a minute for you. Uh, me me come back later. Adios. <laughs> me go have a look at Baker Woman's place. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Get him up, Scout. Some time later, Mamie Baker turned in at the road that led to her small homestead. But instead of stopping at the house, she drove the buckboard a short distance beyond to a dilapidated-looking bunkhouse in back. There, she pulled up. Whoa, whoa there. Whoa. Uh. Hey, Louie. Yeah? Send a couple of those hombres out to get the supplies in the buckboard. Sure. Yeah, we'll Spike. Get the stuff Mamie brought. Sure, come on, boy. All right. Where's Red? Out someplace looking things over. Said he'd be back in time for supper. Well, he's got to give me more money. 
I had to dig my own purse to pay for part of the stuff I got. Don't worry, Mimi. You'll be well paid for hiding us out here. Red will give you more money for supplies when he comes in. If he's going to use the gang for anything, he'd better do it soon, Louie. Why? Getting tired of putting us up here? Ah, you know that's not the reason. Red was Blackie's best friend, and I'm glad to do him favors. For a price. Ah, but with me buying so much stuff, that storekeeper's beginning to wonder. You mean you think he's suspicious? Yeah, here's the stuff. Well, don't stand there like a couple of idiots. Put it on the table where it belongs. Sure. Bring your loads, Spike. You didn't answer my question, Mamie. Do you think that storekeeper... I heard you the first time. No, no, I don't think that. But he's liable to shoot off his mouth to someone who might get suspicious. It's risky for Red and the gang, that's all. Hey, one of you hombres rustle up some kindling and some water. Right. I'll have everything ready when Red walks in, and then we'll all eat. Meantime, Tonto had followed the tracks of the buckboard out to the Baker place. It was dusk when he arrived, and as he rode up the entrance road, he noticed that the house was dark. That's strange. An old lighting house. Me wonder if... Oh, me see light in low building at back of house. Most got hope on a hole. Easy, Scott. Easy. Me tie you here at hitch rack. And me go find out who in building at back. <coughs> quiet, Scott. Quiet, fella. Me not be long. Me come back soon. Maybe then me have something to tell, Lone Ranger. <laughs> A few minutes later, Red Carson approached the place along a back trail. Red was always cautious, and this time was no exception. He pulled up a short distance back from the bunkhouse near a clump of trees. Tying his horse to a low limb, he approached the bunkhouse on foot, moving quietly and carefully, and ready to draw his gun at an instant's notice. Meanwhile, Tonto had silently moved up to a window of the bunkhouse and looked in cautiously. Seeing Mamie Baker and the outlaws inside... He was about to turn away and head back to the front of the house to get Scout when his sharp ears caught the soft pad of a footstep behind him. Tonto swung around well, and stared into you? the barrel of Red Carson's gun. Don't move, Indian. No. Me not move. What are you doing here? Let me see light in the bunkhouse window. Let me look in. Nosy red skin, aren't you? Satisfied with what you saw inside? Let me see woman fixing supper for ranch hand. Hmm. You look too smart to think there's ranch hands on a run-down dump like this place. Well, me not no place. Me come long way, village not near here. Maybe. But no Indian I ever met up with was loco enough to think there were ranch hands on a place that shows it hasn't been worked for years. Me not notice. Well, me go now. Me not want trouble. <laughs> if you weren't looking for trouble, why'd you come snooping around here? You're not leaving here yet, Indian. Well, what you do? I'm taking you inside so as we can all get a close look at you. Now, get going around to the door. Uh, all right, go on inside. Uh, let me go. Hey, where'd you get the redskin? Uh, why you got your gun on him, Red? I found this sneaking coyote snooping at the window when I came along. Thought I'd better bring him in so as we could look him over. That's the Indian I saw at the store late this afternoon. That's right. right. You think he could have followed you out here, Mamie? Make him tell while he came here, Red. Yeah. Well, me tell him already. Me not say more. You'll say plenty before we're through with you. Yeah, we got ways to make him talk, all right. Me not say more. Take his gun, Louis. Sure. I got it. It's a nice gun, too. Too nice for an Indian. Maybe he stole it somewhere. No, gun mine. Me not steal it. Now, Red, make him talk and tell Wait us why... Wait a minute. You... What's the matter, Mamie? He doesn't have to talk. Huh? Now, I've been racking my brain since this afternoon, wondering where I saw that Indian before. Now I remember. You do? Where did you see him before? At yeah, Blackie's where... trial. What? He was with a tall mast hombre who helped the low get black. Oh, so that's it. I suppose, Indian, you know who we are. Ah, uh, me know. You see, I tell you, Red, he's dangerous. We can't let that redskin get away from here alive. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. At Mamie's words, Tonto tensed, waiting for whatever might happen next. Then Red Carson spoke. Before we get rid of him, we've got to get him to talk. He might have been sent to trail us by that mask man you spoke of, Mamie. Well, speak up, Indian, were you? Me not talk. You'll talk all right. Oh, you... You not do that if him not have gun. Yeah, let him alone for now, Louie. Joe, you and Spike tie him up. Throw him in one of the bunks. We'll eat supper and then we'll give him a going over until he tells us what we want to know. As the evening wore on and Tonto didn't return from town, the Lone Ranger became anxious. Removing his mask, he went to a nearby stream and fixed a suitable disguise. Then, mounting Silver, he set out for town. He's a big fellow. Come on, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Steady now. Something for you, mister? I sent an Indian after some supplies late this afternoon. Did he come in here? Well, there was only one Indian coming here this afternoon. Tall, muscular looking, dressed in buckskin. Yes, that's the one. Well, he gave me a small list and told me to get the stuff ready and he'd be back for it. But he hasn't showed up yet. Oh, that's strange. Well, it sure is. I told him it'd only take a few minutes to get the stuff ready. But after listening to what I told him about Mamie Baker, he seemed anxious to leave for some reason. The stuff's ready there in the counter. You mentioned Mamie Baker. Yep, Blackie Baker's widow. She has a small place about three miles out, the South Trail. Oh, what was it you were telling my Indian friend about her? It was nothing to get excited about. Just that I was wondering why all of a sudden she started to buy so much stuff. Seeing as how she's living alone and all. I told him she bought so much, a buddy would think she had a bunch of cowpokes out there. I see. Well, thanks a lot. Hey, uh, how about the packages? Got One of us will come back for them later. Adios. I must have run onto something. Easy, big fella. Come on, Silver. At the bunkhouse, Mamie Baker, with Red Carson and his men, ate a hasty supper while Tonto lay tied and seemingly forgotten on one of the bunks. After supper, however, Tonto once more became the topic of conversation. Ah, you're a darn good cook, Mamie. Yeah, thanks, Red. Now, let's get back to discussing that Red story. All right. You say he was with a mask man that helped the law catch Blackie. Yep, that's what I said. What I didn't say up to now was who that masked man is, Red. Well, that's right, you didn't. You know who he is? After Blackie left you in Arizona and come down this way, we've begun to hear about that masked man. <laughs> I reckon you'll know who he is, too, when I tell you he's known hereabouts as the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Hey, I've heard of that hombre. Yeah, he works with the law. He never gives up, either. I don't like to think he's after us now. We ought to take that Indian right Hold now. Hold on, Louie. I've been thinking of a plan that might work. Plan? What do you mean? Yeah, what's on your mind, maybe? If you could get that master hombre to come out here alone, thinking that the Indian had a line on you and the gang, you could trap him. <laughs> I, for one, would like that. How are we going to do it, Mamie? Well, Blackie told me this Indian got a line on him and tailed him. When the Indian got near the hideout, he tied a note onto his horse, a big pink, and then he set the horse loose. That masked man got the note and backtracked on the paint's trail. What's that got to do with your idea now? Just this. Make the Indian print a note saying he's got a line on you and the gang and he don't want to leave. And for that masked man to come here to this old bunkhouse. You get it? Yeah, I get the idea. The masked man don't know we already got the Indian. So he comes here, we jump him, and then we got him both. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea, all right. If you can make the Indian write the note, and if his horse is still around... Well, it must be around someplace. He didn't have time to send it away. Spike, go look for it. Right. Meantime, we'll get the redskin to print a note like we tell him to. If he don't, we'll drill him and be done with it. A short time later, after Spike had reported that Scout was tied at the hitch rack in front of the house, Carson had Tonto print the note. Mm, there. There note that you want. Hey, what's that at the end of it? Well, that name written in Indian language. Hey, that's good, Red. The masked man will know it isn't a fake with that Indian name at the end of it. Yeah, that's so. 
All right, Indian. Now we'll take you outside and have you put that note on your horse and send him for that Lone Ranger. Leaving the store in town, the Lone Ranger rode along the south trail toward the Baker homestead. The moon was bright, and as he rounded a bend, he saw a riderless horse coming toward him. In a moment, he recognized the horse as Scout. And there's Scout in the left tunnel. Oh, Scout! Oh, Scout! Oh! Oh, Scout! Hey, Scout! Recognizing the Lone Ranger and Silver, Scout readily stopped and came close to them. The Lone Ranger immediately noticed the note attached to the pommel of the saddle, and leaning over, took it. That is work. Note from Toto. I think the moonlight's bright enough for me to make it out. Kimasabi, me find signs that show Carson and gang hide near here. Not good me leave now. You come alone to old bunkhouse at Baker Place on the south trail. Me wait there. Oh, he signed an Indian word at the end. Let's see. Mean sheriff. <laughs> Easy, Silver. I wonder to come alone. Yet that word, Sheriff. Tonto must have been forced to write this note. That's his way of telling me to bring the lawman. I go tell the sheriff to get some men together. And I'll ride out there ahead of them and see what the situation is. All right, come on, Silver. Scout! Still in his disguise as a cowhand, the Lone Ranger turned around and headed back the short distance to town. Later, arriving at the Baker place, the Lone Ranger dismounted and tied Silver and Scout at the hitch rack in front. Moving quietly, he went to the back and approached the bunkhouse. The bunkhouse was in darkness, and the Lone Ranger, knowing he'd be a perfect target in the bright moonlight, carefully kept to the shadows as he moved forward. Once he stopped and put his mask on over the disguise he wore. Then, soundlessly and like a shadow, he reached the closed door. He stood for a moment, looking around and listening. Then, with guns in readiness, he lifted his heel and sent it crashing against the door, springing aside as it flew open. Toto! The masked man stood listening intently, but he heard no sound to indicate that Toto was inside. He had gone to the bunkhouse with the knowledge that he was probably walking into a trap. Yet he was startled when he suddenly heard a low chuckle behind him. <laughs> Don't turn around, mister. Just stand still where you are. I didn't hear you. I was on the porch roof right over your head. When you kicked open the door, I dropped down behind you. Smart, huh? <laughs> yeah, you learn Red Carson knows his way around. I admit that, Carson. Hey, somebody inside there. Light the lamp. I'll have it lit in a second, Red. All right, you. Go on inside the bunkhouse. One false move means a bullet from this gun at your back. Get going. All right. Here he is, Mamie. Walked right into our trap. I always wanted to see this, hombre, close up. Now watch out. Don't get too close or you'll pull a trick or something, Mamie. You'll take that mask off him when you don't have those guns handy. You see my Indian friend tied and gagged on a bunk over there? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we knew he'd call out to warn you. We didn't fix it so he couldn't. Just lay your guns on the table there, mister. Remember, there's more than one gun pointed at you now. I'll remember. Hey, what was that? Yeah, his horse, I reckon. Left his horse and the Indians just around the house at the hitch rack. Go ahead, lay your guns on the table like I told you. All right, Carson. As the Lone Ranger walked slowly toward the table in the center of the bunkhouse, thoughts ran rapidly through his mind. He had recognized Silver's whinny, and he felt sure it was because other horses were approaching. As he noticed the lamp burning on the table, a quick plan came into his head, one which involved great risk, but would serve to give him the chance he needed. Go on, lay those guns on the table. I'm going to. As Carson, Mamie, and the others watched, the Lone Ranger slowly put down one gun. Then he reached forward as if to put down the other. But instead, with a sudden sweep of his arm, he swung it crashing against the glowing oil lamp. Hey, what? He knocked the lamp off. It's dark. Swing the lead toward the table. As the lamp fell, the Lone Ranger ducked to one side in the momentary darkness. And retrieving his guns, he crawled across the floor to the bunk upon which Tonto lay. Suddenly, a small flame flickered on the floor. Then the oil from the broken lamp burst into flames. The oil, it on fire. Good. Mass man's lying over by the bunk. Uh, Bullets must have hit him. Fire will finish them all. Well, let's get out of here quick. Yeah, come on, come on. Hey, man, come back. Mass man's getting up. What? Well, I've got him again. Oh, you won't? Oh, my shoulder. Yeah, quick. Come on up. Hello, you've got to hurry. I'll cut your cords. There. Get the gag loose while I cut the cords on your ankles. That's got it. Uh, now we can talk. 
Me think them shoot you when we see you laying on the floor near bunk. Good thing they thought so, too. That fire's getting bad. Let's get out of here fast. Uh-huh. Now, the sheriff and his posse have arrived. We have to use the window to get out. The flames are covering the door. Uh, it's not good. <coughs> no. All right, let's go. You first time. Hurry. Uh, the air feels good. Uh, get away, men. There's one of them, Matt. Look out. Hold your fire. Thanks, Sheriff. Well, I guess we got them all, monsieur. Light from that burning bunkhouse helped, too. They come running out of there into our arms almost. Let's go over and make sure they caught Carson. He was wounded in the shoulder. You haven't got anything on me, Sheriff. Well, that woman who planned trap for Lone Ranger. Her keep outlaws here in Bunkhouse. I don't see how the Sheriff got to find out. You and Mamie Baker aren't as smart as you thought, Carson. I don't tricked you with that note. <laughs> Indian name me put on at end of note was word for Sheriff. That's right. It was enough to let me know he was in trouble. Needed plenty of help. Uh, that masked hombre is too doggone smart. <laughs> yep, smart enough to take care of you, Mamie, and Carson, too. Well, we got them all, Sheriff. Good enough. You have enough men to take care of them, Sheriff. Adios. Come on, Adios, Adios. Adios. Oh, Red, you are a fool not to be more careful with him when you had him in there. If he hadn't got near that lamp and knocked it I over. I reckon he would have found some other way, Mamie. He's like that, you know. Why, he even fooled me when he come to get me without his mask on. I, I thought he was somebody the masked man had sent. What? You mean you saw him without his mask? I sure did. But he fooled me once before like that. And both times his face was different. I guess nobody will ever see his real face. You see, Carson, it takes a much smarter man than you to put one over on the Lone Ranger. Lone oh, Ranger? This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.